Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the Schroeder frequency of a room and what that says about a laboratory that you're, you're testing something in. For example, many products are tested at riverbanks. Yep. Uh, what's their limit? It's 190 cubic meters is the size of that room. Okay. okay. The Schroeder, there is a formula out there for calculating the lower frequency limit of a room based upon its volume. Okay. okay. If you look at that formula, you will find out that 190 cubic meter room will give you a cutoff frequency of roughly 180 to 190 uh, uh, hertz uh, at the low end. Okay. So anything below that becomes an educated guess. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. It means you can't measure. Now, the new ASTM standard, or at least the, ref the reference they're using now, is five uh, overlapping modes before you can measure a particular frequency. If you hmm. do that, then the cutoff of that particular room is around 200 hertz. Okay. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's good information for folks who are looking at data from the yeah. lab like that. Yeah, just do, you know, it's it's an easily accessible formula to go calculate it, uh, shorter uh, frequency uh, cutoff. Uh, just run at that uh, or go look at the five overlapping modes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is the, this is, the, goes right along with this question. I'm going to keep it in the same, same talk that about uh, 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 the prediction software for uh, rooms, uh, you know, you got Eves, you got Odeon, you got Catacoustic, you got all these, and mm -hmm. how they how, how they relate to the absorption coefficient and the existing data on materials and the the response that they have, which is measured in these small labs. And okay. we, we get back to the difference between academics and real world. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. in it all these all these programs, uh, in order to be accepted academically, have mm -hmm. to follow the rules, and the rules are that an absorption uh, um, uh, absorption coefficient is what it, it is. It's a coefficient zero to one, and one is maximum. Okay, so therefore, numbers that exist above one in real measurements can't exist. So we have to roll them over at 0.99. Right. So you may have a coefficient in a measurement that says that something is 1.7 or 1.4 or 1.05. You cannot use that number. You can only roll it over to 0.99 and then do the multiplication back again. This causes a problem in the fact that if you have a piece of material that says that if you take the total absorption and divide it by the area, and you end up with 1.5. Okay, the program will not allow 1.5. It'll allow 0.99. So you take the 0.99, multiply it by the area, and you get a certain amount of absorption. You can never return to the original amount of absorption. You can't reverse reverse the, the, uh, the uh, equation. And that causes a problem. So all these programs have to be taken with a grain of salt in the fact that they're maximizing the absorption at 0.99, whether it is or not. And, right. and that is a, uh, a problem. And when you talk to them, they will all tell you the same thing. When you change the standard so that there's no longer a coefficient but a constant, then we will upgrade the, the programs. Well, this is like saying, okay, fine. We know there is a problem, but we're not going to do anything about it because it's not official. <laughs> you know, so the, you know, so now you have to worry about the standards groups like the ISO and the ASTM that they upgrade and update their standards. And the problem is they usually run about ten years behind what's going on in the world because I hate to say it, but the standards committees, as a rule, are there to maintain consistency whether it actually is factual or not. Lowest common they, denominator. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So let's just maintain it the way it is until the, the facts become so overwhelming that we have no choice but to recognize it. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a shame. 
it's it is what it is it's what i it know. is what it is it, it is what it is let's deal yeah. with it well, it's yeah. like you know it's like you, you, you it's sometimes the the idea becomes so prevalent that it becomes the the common instead of you know an idea okay so mm-hmm. you know if, if you have a a wall uh, uh we've had situations where uh we've had uh, building people who are saying that unless it's described specifically in a certain code that it can't exist and perfect example is my laboratory okay the building we're in has four foot thick concrete walls well the code only goes up to one foot thick concrete and says that one foot thick concrete is fireproof but okay. four foot concrete is not defined as fireproof because it's not described okay so the the building code people say well if it's not defined then we have to assume it's a worst case situation which is a wooden wall so i had to sit there and think about what well, in order to need code they were telling me i had to cut windows every 20 feet in my foot by five foot thick concrete wall because mm-hmm. that will allow the firemen in to to put away or get, get a, do away with a fire in my in my concrete bunker because my concrete bunker will burn. This is what I mean by rules. Okay, rules can be good; they can be bad. It, and when they're bad, if you don't use common sense, and 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 one of the things I I I got from somebody one time from in, involved in in, in uh, government is that. The government doesn't recognize things like the laws of physics. Okay, they're theories and only theories. And the reason is is because only the legislature can make laws. <laughs> okay, and I, right. I pointed this out to somebody one day and I said, so if the legislature says the gravity is not a law, then you're gonna tell me that people just float away, right? <laughs> because you haven't, you haven't defined uh-huh. gravity as a law. And the one guy said, well, he said, according to what we have to deal with in the government, that's true. And, and I said, so you're denying physics. No, we're just saying it's not a law. <laughs> we're the only purveyors of law. Okay. You guys are science people. There are theories. And I said, well, you know, the best way of checking out the theory of gravity is to go to the second floor and step out of the window and see if the theory of gravity will keep you from sitting on the floor and becoming a respot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, and this guy just looked at me like, I, you don't understand. Only legislatures could do laws. And I said, well, I said, there is something called the law of gravity. And and I'm sorry, but it isn't going to change just because the legislature says it's going to change. Yeah, yeah you step out a window on the second floor, uh, yeah. and the law will uh, uh, uh <laughs> for your breaking yeah. that one. <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. and i just i just pointed this out and the person looked at me kind of like funny like you don't understand law <laughs> and oh, i'm sitting there going right. you don't understand physics i <laughs> 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 take my word <laughs> one will take precedence over the other without you worrying about it <laughs> that's right yes absolutely so, yeah so we deal with this all the day long in our business of so building rooms and stuff like that too. So uh, be aware that sometimes you're being uh, hamstrung by quote laws that are really not laws. <laughs> okay, they're, they're they're pieces of of uh, wording that is intended to describe what a law is, but most of the time doesn't happen because it goes through a whole bunch of bureaucrats. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've had, uh, I've worked with building uh, 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 inspectors and whatnot. Some of them are wonderful and helpful and they're great. Uh, they will mention the law states is this, this, and this, but I don't have anything on that. So don't, don't worry about it. That's what the good ones would say. But the yep. ones that are, that are like by the book, you know, uh, wh- what's his name? Uh, the guy in 1984 in the book, um, uh, um, uh, the, the main character of that book. But he was following the rule book, a letter of the law, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That too. So, yeah. Um, That's why I said, you know, so our building has never been able to meet code because it, it was built outside the code by basically nuclear power plant uh, specifications mm-hmm. with the federal. 
and they had yeah. nothing to do with county code. And yeah. the county was just very upset about that because, well, they should have done it according to our rules. And it was like, your rules it don't apply to walls. nuclear power plants. You had no laws. You had no laws about nuclear power plants. <laughs> oh, my so, so this is, that's one reason we have these nice little signs on our building that says, if you enter our building, you enter at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. you know it's, it's like if it doesn't meet specifications it doesn't meet code county code and it's like mm, okay that's fine <laughs> i got no problem with that <laughs> just don't bother to come in here <laughs> it's easier yeah. to do that <laughs> yeah. so 